Hi, my name is Sabrina Stepp. I am a senior at Sam Houston State University, um, and I this is my teacher preparation admission interview video. Um, I my focus is in fourth through eighth grade English, language arts, and social studies. So. Um, I guess we shall get started. Um, as far as the interview questions, the first question was um, just in my own schooling, um, whether I had a subject area, task, or assignment where I struggled, how I solved it, and how I would use this experience to guide uh, my students in the future. And so, um, reflecting back on my time in school, I believe that I generally <laughs> didn't have that hard of a time. Um, I was very blessed and just being really good at school overall, um, very book smart. So, but there was one specific class that I really struggled in and ultimately ended up failing and that was French. Um, it was my second year of French, so the first one I passed, um, I don't know if my grades were great, I can't actually remember, but I know that the second year I ended up failing. And so um, I think that really what happened was that I had not really developed very good studying habits because I never really had to study before. And when it came down to it, I was not um, as intentional with my time or with studying as I really could have and should have been. And so basically whenever I went through the second year, um, I just did everything I could to pass. Obviously I didn't want to have to take the class again. I was in my junior year of high school at that time, so I really didn't want to um, take a foreign language my senior year. And so I just um, really had to be more strict with myself and disciplined with my time and finding um, time to study and really seeking inward and finding like what study habits worked for myself. Um, so. As far as using that in my classroom, I think that um, I really want to work with my students on developing good study habits. Whether or not they necessarily need to study, um, we're definitely going to need to take some time to review and to study and to understand the importance of studying. And I'm really thankful for that experience because as I've continued education in college, some of the studying habits that I developed at that time have been really beneficial to my time here at SAM. And so um, I really want my students to understand the importance of studying at uh, an early stage in their schooling career so that they're able to take that with them in the future. Um, the next question was just about a teacher who impacted my education, um, I'm going to say positively, and how um, that experience will impact my teaching in the future. So specifically, um, the last three years of high school I was in theater, and my theater teacher, his name was Mr. Prawl, um, he was the kind of teacher that pushed you, and sometimes pushed you to your limits. I'm sure there were days I came home crying, and exhausted, and overworked even, um, and frustrated with uh, the situation, but I remember leaving um, high school, and because of the way he pushed me and what he really like expected out of me. Um, and at the end of it, he was so encouraging. Like when it all came together and you know, I, I did the work, he's like, this, this is what I knew you were capable of, you know? And I think it was just having someone who had that kind of faith in me, even when I didn't even know myself what I was capable of, was such a blessing. And um, ultimately, walking away from high school, I knew that I could do anything, anything I set my mind to. So um, my hope is that I will be able to push my students the same way, uh, maybe not make them cry because uh, that wouldn't make me feel very good, but ultimately I want them to see their potential and see what they're capable of. And that's really what Mr. Prawl took, um, gave to me was really an understanding of what I can do and that I can do anything. And so, um, yeah, that's what I want my students to learn while we're in class together and I want them to be inspired in that same way. Um, the next question was just about strengths and weaknesses that will either make me an effective educator or um, how I will address the weaknesses um, throughout my teaching career. So as far as my strengths, I think that I am a very compassionate and understanding person. Um, that's helped me in working with kids um, in general. You kind of do have to be very understanding and patient um, with students. And so 
um, I think that uh, my mind is open to all sorts of possibilities and so um, having kids come in and tell you all sorts of wild stories about their lives or um, whatever whatever they may bring to the table you just have to have an open mind to it and um, I think that that's something that I'm really good at is never being surprised because I think the world is full of all sorts of crazy unique individuals and um, and sometimes that does start at a young age and we just learn that they're colorful and um, and so I think that that's a, a strength definitely in being able to understand and relate to my students and um, you know in our society teachers take on a lot of roles we are educators but we're also mentors and um, counselors at times and sometimes we even take on somewhat of a parental role um, in certain circumstances and so um, I think sometimes having that patience and understanding is really beneficial to um, almost anyone you interact with but especially children who are just trying to sort their situation out and figure themselves out and as far as a weakness that I have um, very specifically I have a big problem with taking on way more than I can handle um, and it can be beneficial because I have a servant heart and I love um, just staying busy and staying active and having things to do just excites me but um, what I'm learning with time and what I think even in education and my career I will learn is that you have to be 100% to be able to give 100% and unfortunately um, when we spread ourselves too thin we aren't able to give our 100% in the areas that matter most and so finding that balance is um, crucial to my time um, in the education field and really throughout life and so I think that that's something that I'm slowly learning and that will be a learning process um, but it's definitely something that I struggle with at times and um, it's gonna be hard and uh, something I will find balance in as I go and then um, the last question was just to explain what my relationship as a teacher should look like with students outside of my classroom as well as on social media and so um, I think that this can be so tricky because um, we are a society that does everything on social media and so um, I think that what I have learned with time is that although um, it's important for me not to post anything that I would never want my students to see or their parents to see or anything I could ever be ashamed of and I generally don't um, I still feel as though maybe um, just cutting that relationship and not allowing them to have such an intimate personal relationship with us is important because um, like I said they are looking up to us as examples and we're all human and sometimes we do um, you know post either our political views or um, something that's gonna sway their thought process and ultimately um, we just want to guide them in the right direction and so being in that uh, education environment being their teacher we obviously have our professionalism on 100 percent but um sometimes on our social media we get a little too intimate or a little too personal and um i never want to sway my students in a direction or their opinions or their thoughts in a way that could impact them negatively or um, make me appear as a negative role model in their life so um, and as far as outside the classroom i do think it's appropriate to say hello to your students um, I do think it's okay to say to um, you know chat with them for a minute if you see them out in public it would obviously probably make them feel special and like you know them and recognize them and I think that's important for them to know and feel comfortable with us um, but there's a really fine line between that comfortability and too much of an intimate friendship obviously we see so much on the news about um, teachers who have developed those intimate relationships that go way too far and I think that just cutting that off early by not accepting friend requests on social media and not having those blurred lines is really important and so um, so I think that it's okay to be cordial it's okay to be polite and friendly um, but you really do have to be firm with students and setting those boundaries and saying you know I'm your teacher and I'm your role model and I'm your leader but I'm not necessarily your friend all the time um, and I'm definitely not someone who you know needs to know the most intimate details of what you post on social media and vice versa so um, so I think that that is really important ultimately I would never accept a friend request from a student or um, 
probably not even their parents, just not to be disrespectful by any means, but uh, it's just those blurred lines and that can get really sticky really fast if you're not careful with that, obviously. Um, we see it play out all the time, so. Um, so that is that. Um, I hope that uh, you like what you hear and um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my interview um, and I am excited to see what the future holds and where I may end up and I appreciate everything um, and thank you so much.